Let's talk about coordinate systems, polygons, and congruence. We have one-dimensional coordinate systems, two-dimensional coordinate systems, and both of these contain an origin and an x-axis. The two-dimensional coordinate system also contains a y-axis and quadrants. And then we're also going to talk about the distance formula. So here's an example of a one-dimensional coordinate system. You probably know it well as a number line. And in order to find distance on this coordinate system, you start with a larger coordinate, like 4, and you take away a smaller coordinate, like negative 3, so that 4 take away negative 3 equals 7. So the distance between negative 3 and positive 4 is 7. Here is a two-dimensional two coordinate graph. This one is showing all four co uh, quadrants. For some reason, we are in the habit of naming these things with Roman numerals, but as fewer and fewer people can read Roman numerals, it is just as common to label this, these with uh, regular Hindu Arabic numerals. So we can call those quadrants 1, 2, 3, and 4, no matter how you write their numerical names. Um, and again, 1 is the positive, the, co the quadrant where both in the x co and the y coordinates are positive. And then from there we go counterclockwise um, to quadrant 4. Uh, typically, when we're never going to deal with negative x's or negative y's, we only show the quadrant 1 coordinate uh, grid. And so the origin is right down down here, and uh, that's where you start counting from, the lower left-hand corner. Typically, we write the distance formula uh, with just d isolated. Now, the distance formula is derived from the Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared equals, equals c squared, where c is the hypotenuse of the triangle. Well, since d is the distance uh, between from a to b that I am looking for, instead of c, I'm going to write d. So a squared plus b squared is the square of our distance. Now let's just get d isolated. d has been squared, so we take its square root. Whatever you do to one side, you also do to the other. So then in that uh, line right there, we took, a, we took a square root of both sides. Um, now, what is a? a, I am calling the horizontal distance from a to b. That would be this distance right here. And uh, in order to find that, you subtract the x-coordinates. So b, the x-coordinate of b is at 9, and the x-coordinate of a is at 1. So 9 take away 1 would be 8. And you write that as x of the second coordinate take away x of the first coordinate. So it's the x difference. And then to that, we're going to add the y difference, which is from a to b upwards from, let's see, that would be from 4 up till 10. That would be 6. So on the next screen, we're going to show all of that. So the distance is equal to the square root of the x difference squared plus the y differences squared. Well, coordinate a is at 1, 4. b is at 9, 10. So the first coordinate, x1, x sub 1, y sub 1, is at 1, 4, and the, coordinate, and the coordinates of the second point are at x sub 2, y sub 2, which is at 9 and 10. Let's plug all that stuff in. So instead of writing um, x sub 2, instead of writing x sub 2 minus x sub 1, we're going to write 9 take away 1. Instead of writing y sub 2 minus y sub 1, we're going to write 10 minus 4. Um, 9 take away 1 is 8. 10 take away 4 is 6. Those are still squared. Now, remember when you're uh, dealing with squares, square roots of squares, that Normally, it, it, well, if they were multiplied, you just could just square root those things. But these are added, and that square root sign also implies parentheses. You must do what's under there before you take its square root. So we must actually square up 8 and get 64, and square up 6 and get 36. 
64 plus 36 is 100. The square root of 100 is 10. So the distance from A to B is 10. Let's talk about polygons. A uh, connected set of at least three line segments in the same plane such that each segment intersects exactly two others, one at each endpoint. So here is a vertex. Here is a vertex. Here is a vertex. Then this polygon has a bunch of vert vertices. That's the plural of vertex. How many sides does this thing have? It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Where did I start counting? Seven. It has seven sides. So this is a seven gone. What do we call this thing? We call it a seven gone. Like polygon, it's a seven gone. Poly means many, seven gone means exactly seven sides. Um, this one down here is a pentagon. It's got five sides. We could also call it a five gone. And this one over here is not a polygon because it fails to have our connecting lines at the endpoints of those lines. So this is an endpoint, and that's an endpoint, and those cross another line segment. They don't connect at the endpoints, they connect also in between, um, in the middle of the line segments. So that's why this one is not a polygon. Um, what does the word congruent mean? Well, informally, it means same size, same shape. Formally, in geometry, we write two polygons are congruent if and only if there is a correspondence between their vertices such that all of their corresponding sides and angles are equal. So let me under underline or underscore the important parts. They've got to be polygons. Um, they are congruent. That if and only if means you, this goes forwards and backwards. There's got to be a correspondence between their vertices so that corresponding sides and angles are equal. Okay. Now the orientation doesn't matter. You can pick that figure up and flip it over, um, or you can turn it. Flips and turns are allowed. These can still be um, congruent polygons. So that point right there would correspond to this point right here. This point right here would correspond to that point right there. And I could do all that all the way around that figure so uh, that those vertices would correspond. And one figure could, if you could cut it out and overlay it, it would overlay the other one and fit exactly. That's what we mean by same size, same shape. Congruent triangles. Corresponding sides are equal. Corresponding angles are equal. Now, let's do a terminology use clarification. We're going to talk about lengths and angles being equal and polygons being congruent. There are books that uh, will use the, the term congruent a little more loosely. For instance, if I have one angle congruent to another angle, well, okay, let's say that they're the same measure angle, but they, they're equal in that their angle measures are equal, but if we were to say you superimpose one on top of the other, it might not look quite right because the lengths of the sides are not the same. Well, that, is, that isn't what makes a angle equal. They're not congruent in that sense, um, uh, but they are equal in measure. So we're going to use equal in terms of angle measurement and distance, but we're going to use uh, congruent in terms of polygons. And the symbol for congruent is that uh, equal sign with a squiggle on top of it. And we read it, this is congruent to that. Two triangles are congruent if and only if there is a correspondence between their vertices such that all of their corresponding sides and angles are equal. And then the corollary to that is two triangles are congruent to a, two triangles that are congruent to a third triangle are also congruent to each other. For instance, if uh, triangle ABC is congruent to RTS and um, HJK is congruent to RTS, that that means that ABC and 
H, J, K are also congruent to each other.